Hello and welcome to Perfectly Paranormal, episode 25. My name's Anna Schmidt, and I'm here every week to share with you true paranormal encounters and information about devils, demons, and dark energy beings that no one else talks about. And today we're exploring what house healers such as myself call the spirit of place. And this term refers to the energy within the land, under and around our homes, and also in our gardens, and how it can become corrupted by our negative thoughts, words, actions, and reactions. And I'll be sharing a couple of my personal experiences that I found totally fascinating about how the land can communicate with us when we're open and willing to listen. Now, the spirit of the land embodies the essence and vitality of a specific geographical area. It is an intangible force that infuses life and character into the natural surroundings. This ethereal entity is deeply connected within the land, its ecosystems, and the elemental nature caring beings that inhabit it. Now, the land energy can often show psychically open people images of troubled areas where energy is stagnant or where the land is in pain. As I've talked about quite often, I'm a feeler. First and foremost, with my psychic senses, I do see, I do hear spirits sometimes. But mostly, I feel, my body feels, my mind picks up on the energy. I talk about my paranormal radar, which is my bodily senses, picking up on what is changing around me energetically. So as a feeler, I often walk the land and feel with my body and my energy the negative emotional build-up and other disruptions that the land is crying out to release. Now, sometimes I don't actually visit these locations in person and clients will always send me photos. Generally, it's a photo of the front or the back of their house. Sometimes if it's a piece of land, it might be one, two or three photos. But a local gentleman actually sent me nine photos of his property. He just knew there was something that needed attention. So in the first of our two stories, hear how a tree is the voice for the spirit of place and what it wanted to show me. And I've called this story, The Guardian Who Gets My Attention. Now a local Tasmanian client found me through an online search engine and contacted me right away. He and his family had recently moved into a really lovely, it was a beautiful country home on a three-acre property in southern Tasmania. And not long after being there, this man said to me that there's something just didn't feel right about the property. The home was beautiful. The land was lovely. There was an orchard. There was a dam. It was, you know, there was a chicken yard. It was just the typical ideal country property. But the more he lived there, the more he said to me that it just didn't feel right. And the dynamic of the relationships in their families was starting to change in a really negative way. They all had sleep issues and none of them were happy in any sense. I know now that not only the house structure and the interior of the home can have energetic issues, but also the land. The land picks up and absorbs the vibrations that we create through our actions and our behaviours. And it will simply sit there until someone like myself comes along and clears out all the energy imprints, all the trauma imprints, 
and releases the land from its pain. Now, the land can get quite unhappy. As you're going to hear in a couple of these stories, it can pump out really detrimental vibrations that our sensitive energy fields can feel and react to, sometimes sending our energy into a bit of a spin. And we don't quite know what's wrong, but we just know that something isn't right. Now, Greg's land was extremely unhappy. Now, how do I know that? You'll hear soon enough. I felt it through our phone call. And you can just think that sounds pretty weird. I feel all sorts of things through phone calls, through text messages, through emails, through looking at websites, photos. You'd be surprised how energy can find its way to you. Now, Greg was open to a house clearing. So I didn't think he would find it strange if I asked that I could talk with the land as well. So Greg sent me photos, two of his house exterior, front and back, and different areas of the property. Now, when people take these land photos, I just ask them to follow their intuition, follow their gut instinct. What do you think is talking to you? Now, some people won't understand what that means. And they'll just click around and send me 25 photos. That is absolutely okay. But Greg honed in on the one part of the land that really, well, actually got the whole ball rolling for this property. I had to clear the land before I could even enter the house. This is how strong this land energy was. So as I looked through the photos the following day, there was a particularly tall eucalyptus gum tree that really stood out. Like I looked through all the photos and I just seemed to every time go back to this one particular photo with this gum tree. Like it seriously wanted my attention. You know, I'm staring at this photo going, wow, that, now that is a, that is a magnificent gum tree. Now, this tree had a very defined presence within the landscape. And I felt it was, it was like a land guardian. It was an overseer, like a spokesperson for the property and probably the surrounding area as well. Now, this tree was my starting point for this home and property clearing. And I wouldn't get anywhere near the house until the land was happy first. So as I stared at this tree, I just allowed my energy to tune into the land. Now, after tuning into all the photos and working out that the tree was my starting point, I always ask energetic permission to enter properties. Really, really important to treat the land with respect, the home with respect, and you'll find that you get better interactions and better energy clearing when you work on a totally respectful level. So after I did my request to enter the property, I stared at this tree. You know, I looked at this tree long and hard, probably for a good 10 to 15 minutes. And within the land, I felt a very subtle shift in energy. Now, this wasn't land energy. This is what I call dark energy presence. They quite often will sit within a home, within a place, within a person or a pet, and they'll just do their feeding thing that comes naturally to them, just feeding off the energetic imprints. Now, these energy beings had tried to hide from me. They're like, I figure if we just sit still long enough, she won't notice that we're here and she might go away. Sometimes that's their mentality. So as I stared at the tree, right, I was also aware of the paranormal beings, as I just mentioned, and I just allowed my pendulum to swing. And I just waited to see what was going to present itself to me. And within about 10 seconds, there was a massive flood of emotional imprints. It's like they'd been released 
all of a sudden and I felt sadness and despair and sorrow and panic and rage. And my pendulum was literally spinning out of control. And there was bursts of hostility and resentment that it's almost like it hit me in the face. It's really hard to explain unless you're doing energy work and you know what it's feel what it feels like to get hit by a burst of energy. There was so much going on in this land that it was a little bit overwhelming. Like seriously, my my body I had to pull back a little bit and just settle myself. I had to calm. I still get a little bit emotional now when I think about this piece of land because there was so much trauma. So my hands and my body were literally vibrating and my mind was spinning as I caught glimpses of trauma that had been suffered by people on the land from around about sort of 180, maybe 200 years ago. And, you know, I'm trying to sit there calmly and do my work and I'm, I'm getting these images and these emotions. It was truly astonishing what the land had hung on to for nearly 200 years. And I methodically cleared the build-up of energetic emotions and the trauma and it took me probably two to three hours to outline the emotions, to work with the land, how the land wanted these emotions cleared. It wasn't interested in the paranormal beings. Like, they're parasites to the land. They're just like, deal with them later. You've got to focus on this first. So when I'm doing these, these house clearings or land clearings, you work with the land. Humans are not in control. We are simply occupying this space at this particular time. The land will go on and there will be more humans that come in. You know, so you've got to listen. The land wants to tell you something, you listen. It's the same way that I work with the spirit elders, with the First Nation elders that come to me now when I do some of my local jobs, which I'm going to be talking about in a future episode. So as I mentioned earlier, it took me two to three hours to sit and highlight all of the emotional imprints, work out when they'd been created, how many episodes had been created, the approximate time frame, which was all around 172 years, right up to 189, 190 years ago. So with the emotional imprints identified and the trauma imprints identified, I could now clear them, release them from the land, send them off into the universe to be recycled, as I call it. Once that is done, then the land directed me to work with the paranormal beings. So they're getting a bit, they're getting a bit nervous now. They're like, well, she's just removed our food source. You know, where are we going to go? They simply all chose to go back out into the environment. I give them the choice to transition into a place in the afterlife for them called the healing space, or they just go back out in the environment. It is the most respectful way to work with these beings because they're simply energy. They're just going to go where their energetic food source is. So clearing land is you work with the land energies first, You work with the demonic level beings. You get rid of the heavies first. The dark energy beings. Once that was done, that release allowed for another level of energy to come forth. Now, there was 200 spirits, both people and animals, that were freed from what had been holding them, holding them to the land. They'd been attached to these emotions. They'd been, it's almost like they'd been trapped within the land. With that release of the emotional imprints, it was like a big, they just transitioned into the afterlife. There's no other way to say it. There was was like a, a big communal thank you and away they went. You know, no issues. They'd been there for such a long time because they'd been weighed down by the emotional and the trauma imprints. 
once that's released, then they can move on. You know, they can journey into the next part of their existence. Two weeks after clearing Greg's land and the house, he messaged me to say that he felt a very distinct difference, a very just a very defined energetic change within the land. He found it hard to put it into words, but he felt better within himself. And when he was outside, he said he could walk around the property and everything felt like it was in harmony, if that makes sense. Everything was calm. Everything was at peace. And he never thought that he would be seeking out someone like myself to do an energetic clearing. So two weeks after completing Greg's land and the house clearing, I tuned back into the property. I'd looked at the photo of the tree. The tree was happy. The land was happy. You're going to ask me, how do I know that? It felt different. It felt lighter, brighter. It's almost as if I could feel, it's what I call a hum. It's like this very subtle energetic vibration that I can feel sometimes within land when it's happy. Like it's just got this this happy feel about it. And I've had other clients talk about how they've felt change in the land, change in the energy of their land, and they can hear this sort of humming sound and they're in the middle of nowhere so it's it's nothing man-made that is making that sound it's just the land's happy you know and I was I was so happy to be part of this process and I learned something new from every single land and house clearing job that I do and I'm really really happy to be able to share it with you as well So now for our second story. This encounter was rather interesting, to say the least. The land and the elementals had a rather interesting way of getting Beck and Tim's attention. Now, I've called this experience the Outdoor Toilet Dilemma. Now, Beck and Tim emailed me regarding clearing their newly acquired property. Now, they felt there was some rather misbehaving energetic aspects. They'd bought this beautiful, picturesque property under a majestic mountain. Again, here in Tasmania, we have some of the most beautiful landscape here. And they were really, really excited, you know, to build their new home. And they had other business things that they wanted to build on their property as well. Other structures, they wanted to have events. And there was these troubling situations that just kept occurring that were deterring them from finishing their master plan. So it was the house first. Then there was going to be a meditation structure that they could build to hold classes So Beck and Tim told me of their concerns, you know, and they shared some really strange experiences, including while the home was being built, they lived in a small caravan located on the property. And Tim had very proudly constructed a composting toilet in a small solid shed near the caravan. And one night, a wind with such ferocity came down the mountain and simply blew the toilet off the property and down the hill. Yes, you are hearing me right. I couldn't believe it when he told me. I'm like, can you please repeat that? Sounds to me like you've got some seriously unhappy property. Now, being locals, and in the early days, I would go and visit people. I still do sometimes now, but it was interesting to go and experience this. This land was angry. This land was like a bunch of teenagers on a rampage. It was seriously not happy. 
And Tim just messaged me like, I don't know what is going on on this place. It, it is just impossible to go forward with anything. We feel like we're taking one step forward, 25 steps backwards. And other times, while Beck was bushwalking on the mountain, she'd hear this low, menacing growling coming from behind her. And she couldn't work out where the growling was coming from, as they didn't have a dog. The neighbours didn't have dogs, and there were no native animals to be seen. Now, they'd also both felt very uncomfortable at different times on the property, like they were being watched. But there were no visible people there. They just simply couldn't see anyone. And it was totally starting to unnerve them. Now, Tim and Beck were highly spiritual people. And they believed that these continual occurrences were supernatural. You know, there was no other way to say it. And it just simply could not be explained any other way. Even when they had to deal with the tradespeople coming onto the property, there was all sorts of interference that there was technical interference with communication devices. They would bring the wrong tools. They'd bring the wrong building materials. They wouldn't turn up. They'd get the days wrong. There was so much interference. And Tim was very organised in communicating the appropriate information. There was just something else that was getting in the way. So on arrival, I looked at this mountain. I was just like, wow. They had this beautiful piece of flat land. There was a half-built house and there was the caravan. And you look up and to the left and there was this most amazing mountain. It was just breathtaking, you know, and I'm thinking, why isn't this a beautiful, happy piece of land? But as I stepped out of the car, like I always get to places and I'll sit and observe. As I put my feet on the ground, (laughs) this is when I start to pick up on the information. This land was layered with unhappiness and anger and defiance and hostility and rage and also some other interesting aspects that I'm going to talk about a bit later in the story. This land had witnessed such horrific experiences from many, many of the past tenants that it was determined to put up a fight and deter any new owners from staying. Now, this land energy needed to feel safe. This is always my go-to point when I start a clearing. Talk to the land. What does the land need? You know, because I'm not going to get very far with the house if you don't work with the land first. Got to keep the land happy, find out what it needs, and then you can move on to other levels of the work. So to build trust each time I tuned into that property, I would respectfully ask permission to access the damaging energetic aspects and any input that the land wished to give. You'd be surprised what it can tell you. I spent an entire week gently talking to the land while remotely viewing the property from my home because I needed to build that much needed trust and that positive connection with human beings again. It had become so distrustful of all humans that it was like, no, I'm I'm not dealing with any of you. So I just take it slowly, be patient, you know, be kind and just work with what it needs. Now, this whole case was based around the past tenants who had lived on the land. And there'd been some 12 to 14 people that had rented or leased this property over many, many years. And they'd carried out some pretty detrimental behaviours and activities, such as black magic rituals, other occultist behaviours, animal sacrifice, using Ouija boards. The land was traumatised. Like seriously, it had had enough. It was totally traumatised and just loaded with negative emotional build-up. 
So as I worked with the land, I needed to tread really lightly, really carefully. And I just listened. What do you want to do today? What area do you want to work on? So it was quite a large piece of property. So what I did is I printed out a picture of it on Google Maps and I drew up a grid because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to work out a way to work with the land. This is the biggest land clearing I've done. And we broke the land up into nine different blocks. So I just called it, you know, one, two, three, right through to nine. And I would tune into the land and I said, look, I've drawn up this picture. I want you to have a look at it. You know, how does the land have a look at it? You just got to trust me. Energy works in mysterious ways. And within me laying that out, within about five minutes, I heard when it started block number five. So whether I'm actually talking to the land, as in the, the stones, the rocks, the earth, the soil, the grass, or whether there's energy beings within the land, I just call them all land energies, all spirit of place. You know, I put them into one group because I don't have a full understanding. I don't have an in-depth understanding of them yet. So they seem to be happy with being called spirit of place or land energies. So we worked on grid number five. And over that week, we worked through each of the grid areas and I outlined all the issues that I found. And each time I did a grid, I would talk to Beck and Tim and I'd go, okay, we worked on this today. I also shared this grid with them because it is their property. So they need to be included in the whole process. So I cleared each of those grids like really, really systematically. I'm rather OCD in the way I do my house and land clearing, but it's it's just the way I work and it works. Like seriously, it really does work for the clients. So I keep repeating myself, but we cleared each of the grids on this property. And you'll be surprised, the tradies started turning up on time. They're bringing the right tools. They had the right timber. They had planned ahead. You know, they'd purposely pre-built things that they could bring onto the property now that were quicker to erect. The home was being built quicker. The tradies actually seemed happier. Beck and Tim seemed happier. The land was slowly releasing all its trauma and learning to trust people again. Because Beck and Tim were going to love this place. They were going to look after it like family. And the land needed to just, needed to hear that. It needed to feel that. So what I suggested to Beck and Tim was that they too could build up trust with the land. You know, I mean, they're living there. I'm doing this long distance from my little house in Hobart. And I said to them, This is your home. You talk with the land. Talk to it about your concerns. Express to the land what you want to build on it. Leave, you're going to find this funny, but I just, I ask that this be done. Leave a plan where the land can see it. I know you probably think that's strange, but I find it works. It's because the lands are being included. It's being acknowledged. It's being notified. Okay. Oh, you want to build a meditation center there. Great. You want to build a pathway through here. Wonderful. You want to build a garden there. Fabulous. Oh, a water feature. The land gets excited just as we do when we want to renovate our homes and bring in new things and make it feel great. The land needs to be included because like I said before, we don't own the land. We are simply occupying it for our lifetime and it will go on after we've gone. So after all these detrimental aspects had been cleared, Beck and Tim messaged me about two weeks later after the whole process had been finished to say that the property felt welcoming, it was peaceful, there was no more growling, there was no more peering eyes. And the newly constructed outdoor toilet was still standing. Right, that, that's become the constant giggle on this property now, was the joke about the toilet being blown off the hill. 
And they both said that they felt a really high vibrational hum coming off the land. And they both felt that when they sat outside and they had their morning cup of tea and they looked up at the mountain and they just closed their eyes, they could feel the happiness. They could feel this really vibrant energy coming off the mountain now. It wasn't sad anymore. There was no more despair. There was no more sorrow. There was no more sadness. Felt it had been violated. Now it feels like it's being appreciated. And they take this as a sign of its happiness and contentment. Now for our third experience, land responds to respect in the same way that people do and can often sense people who are open to listening and helping heal its trauma. The terrain will tell you its secrets if it trusts you, as the following experience highlights. Now, this is another Tasmanian story. You get lots of local Australian stories here on my podcast because I've had so many experiences that I've found have really highlighted different energetic aspects of the paranormal and the energy world around us. So this experience I've called the car park with problems. Now I've encountered some interesting energetic disturbances on the land through my house healing work. But this experience that I'm going to share now really takes the cake. I visited a particular car park, which belongs to a large supermarket chain here in Tasmania, several times over around about a six-month period. And whenever I entered the car park, I would get instant brain fog dizziness, disorientation, to the stage where I couldn't even park my car straight. And one time, like seriously, I nearly hit a parked car and I'm not that bad of a driver. Upon exiting the vehicle, I'd have in my mind a list of things that I needed to get for my dinner that night, a few ingredients to make a rather tasty dish. And I'd be heading to this particular shop. And as I would get in there, I'd start to forget what I needed. Now, this this is more than just human forgetfulness. I'm pretty good at remembering lists. But when I used to go to this place, I'd be fine until I drive into the car park. And I'm like, I don't know what is up with this place. Something is not happy. Something wants my attention. Now, my brain fog would worsen as I wandered around the aisles, trying to remember what I needed. Now, not remembering what I needed, I would simply just throw my arms up in the air in disgust at my very poor memory skills and leave the shop. And when exiting the car park, I'd be mumbling away, annoyed and upset with myself because I couldn't remember what I needed. And then I'd get 20 metres from the car park, and then I'd suddenly remember the dish I wanted to cook and what I needed to complete the recipe. Like this particular place was a total mind spin, and I was not the only one to feel this way. Now, after half a dozen of these experiences of this energetic mind meddling, as I call it, I had had enough. It takes a lot to push my anger button, but I was like, seriously, something needed to be done. So I set aside an hour or two to tune into this property. And as always, I ask permission of the land and the building guardians to connect to the energy of the place and carry out an energetic cleansing of paranormal beings, energetic imprints, could be portals, you know, black magic. Who knows what is in places until you actually tune in and know what to look for. So as you would imagine, there was 
quite a few energy beings present in this shop. And we're not talking dark energy. We're talking the big Ds, as I call them, the demonic level beings. They were simply roaming around this shop, probably infecting many, many people's minds with confusion and brain frog. And I can't remember what I need for what I'm doing. Why am I even here? they love to do because when they upset people, people then create all this emotional food that they like to feed off. Now, I worked out what was in the shop, right? I I went through my list, found all the emotional imprints. There weren't any portals or any psychic cording or any black magic issues. It was purely Human interference, we'll call it. Emotional imprints, trauma imprints, some mental health imprints that people leave little puddles of everywhere they go. We're always offloading these negative vibrations. And when the pools become big enough, that's what brings in the big Ds, the demonic beings. I spent four or five hours clearing the building. Now, that was the easy part. The detrimental energy in the car park was a totally different matter altogether. Now, the land where this car park is located had witnessed many long-term hostile happenings, some physical with fighting and bloodshed, and others as in deeply disturbing mental health energy. And it had all been absorbed into the land, into these great big pools of negatively vibrating energy. And it was all still present there. Now, it had been there for, from memory, oh, probably at least since the mid-1800s. And it had simply been sitting there waiting patiently for someone like myself to come along recognize the energetic issues and clear them. Now, I can't share exactly what I found on this land because it is rather sensitive to a particular location in southern Tasmania. But I spent, I think it was 10 to 12 hours going through every area of this car park from a distance. I did this all remotely from my home. And after I'd spent that time, noted cleared, moved on, all the paranormal beings, all the energetic imprints, I let the land settle for about three weeks. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go for a drive out there and I'm going to see how it feels when I'm actually walking around in this car park. And then I'm going to enter the shop and see how the shop feels. Because I love using my body as a dowsing tool. We all have this energy sensitivity. And when you're aware of it and you want to utilize it, you can pick up on so much around us. So you'll find this really interesting. When I pulled into the car park, there was no brain fog, no disorientation, no dizziness. The land energy felt warm and inviting. Now, this was clear to me that all the trauma and the harmful emotional build-up had been removed. So I parked my car really, really easily, as I normally do. And I walked into the shop and I just you know, roamed around. I'd had in my head three items I needed from you know, a particular shop. And I thought, I'm just going to drive to this location, remember the items, See if I can get in and get out with what I need without any energetic issues. Now, I had no problems at all. I simply walked in the door and because I'm tall, I could see up over the aisles and I saw the signs and I went, oh, yep, I need to go that aisle, that aisle, that aisle. I had my things within 10 minutes back at the car again. It was was just amazing. And this poor piece of land had been so traumatised for so long that I was really, really happy to be able to help. Now, I also know other people who live in this location, and I don't always share with people what I do, the locations where I do my energy clearing. But on three occasions over the next month, I was talking with people in the suburb where this shop is. And they all said to me, you know what? 
I've just I've been into that shop recently and it feels different. I don't feel on edge. I don't feel like I'm being watched. I don't feel uncomfortable. One lady said that her mental health had improved because she actually worked at that shop. She said, look, my, my mental health's really improved. Have you done anything within this land? Have you done any energy work here? And I did say yes, because I never lie about what I do. And she was like, wow. She said, I'm not normally a believer, but she said, I, I am feeling on top of the world. After being here for 10 hours a day, every day, you know, for the last 10 years, she said, this is the first day where I actually have enjoyed coming to work. Energy work holds a never-ending fascination for me. You know, I learn something new from every job that I do, whether it's working with a home, whether it's working with a piece of property or working with a person. I just find it absolutely fascinating and it's so relatable. So if you enjoy the stories that I tell, please subscribe, share it with your friends because it's really important to get that message out there about how the energy world and how the paranormal world around us can affect our mind, body and spirit. So let's look at some of the other interesting aspects that the spirit of place will tell us when we're ready to listen. Now, the spirit of place holds great power. And as you've heard, great influence. It acts as a custodian, nurturing and safeguarding the delicate balance of our environment. It inspires a sense of awe and reverence, inviting humans to develop a harmonious relationship with nature. Now, through its presence, the spirit of the land offers guidance, teaching valuable lessons about sustainability, interconnectedness, and respect for all living things. Looking and listening and being aware of what we're being shown. And also, the spirit of place serves as a source of inspiration and creativity. It fuels the imagination of artists, writers and musicians, inspiring them to create the essence of the landscape in their works. It stirs the souls of individuals, fostering a deep sense of belonging and being connected to the earth, such as for Tim and Beck. Now, people who embrace the spirit of the land often find solace, peace, and a profound connection, and sometimes on a much wider scale as well, which is something that I've found. The more of this house healing work that I do, the more the land is opening up. The land often opens up pathways for self-discovery as well. I mean, how often do people go outside and meditate? Where do we all do our grounding? We're out in nature. We build vegetable gardens. We build beautiful flower gardens, botanical gardens. The land loves being acknowledged and appreciated. In what the land will give back to us in a sense of community and unity. Like seriously, it transcends boundaries and it fosters a shared sense of responsibility for looking after it. The land invites individuals and groups to participate in conservation efforts, sustainability practices and the preservation of local traditions. And it cultivates a collective consciousness that strives to protect and honour the land. Generations to come. So in episode 26, we're talking debunking paranormal occurrences. Yes, I do approve of debunking. I always look. I mean, I love a good paranormal happening in homes, on the land anywhere really, as much as the next person. But sometimes what we think is paranormal 
simply is not. And I will share some of my experiences and some of my clients' experiences, which have turned out not to be paranormal, but more so people's minds playing tricks on them. So thank you for joining me today. And don't forget, if you want to share your paranormal experiences with the world, or you've got a question, please email me at spiritualbeing44 at gmail.com. And for information on paranormal house clearing, you can visit my website. The address is in the description box. And I look forward to sharing this spooky space again with you next week. And remember, life is perfectly paranormal. <laughs>